Namaste, and welcome to our continuing series, Interviews with Disciples and Devotees. And today we are very honored to have Hemant Mehta with us. Hemant, Namaste. Namaste. As I always begin our interviews, I ask first, how did you hear of Sri Aurobindo and Mother? In 1973, when Mother passed away, there was a full issue of Illustrated Weekly by Times of India. And I was at home, midnight at about uh, 12.30, I woke up, and this magazine was next to me where mother's photograph was there on the front page. And when I saw that photograph, something happened in me. And I said, she's the one who is my guru, for whom I was just always looking for. But you didn't know about her before that? Not at all. Not at all. And you had not heard of Sri Aurobindo? Not at all. Interesting. But something happened in my mm -hmm. heart that this is the one where I belong to. And thereafter, in 1984, for the first time, I came to Pondicherry. I was with Newman Bhai. I was <coughs> being a Gujarati, coming from Gujarat, it was easy to connect with him yes. and uh, he guided me. Oh, he was a very good friend of mine also. I used to go very often with him to Gloria. Ah. Practically every time. From 84 onwards, Every year on my birthday, I used to come here for two days, oh. spend time at Gloria with Duman Bai and go back. 84 until? Till? Recent? Till about 2001 or two, like that. Ah, oh, okay. Thereafter, I started coming often, not regularly. Everything was so interesting, so pleasant, and so <coughs> peaceful. I decided to settle down here. Oh. Mother decided that I am not the right person to be here. And so, against mother's wish, I tried to establish here a couple of times. Now that I'm realizing that why mother was not interested me to be here and why she wanted me to be elsewhere. You know my Upa Guru Arabinda Basu right. asked Sri Arabindo if he could come and stay in the ashram. Sri Aurobindo wrote him back, I have spoken with mother and we feel that you should be in the outside world for a while. Sixteen years oh. they kept him out and then he could come. So mother always knows what is best for the soul. That's true. <coughs> I paid a very high price for that. For trying to come here and yes. establish? Huh? Yes. I see. Very interesting. I requested Duman Bai that I want to stay here, live here permanently. And he said that don't do that. So that was the first time when mother told me don't try to come here and establish, stay here. But like a fool, I said, no, I would like to. So I requested Nivan Bai that my childhood hobby is 
farming. I want to buy some land here, do the mm -hmm. farming, and oh. and whatever land that I I can purchase after my death, I would like to give it to Ashram. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, he suggested that <coughs> if you trust me and if you trust Ashram devotees, you cannot come here and start buying it. The price will be very high when you go up front. <gasps> so you, <coughs> somebody else will help you. And Manindra helped me. Manindra of Gloria. Manindra of Gloria, yes. Yeah. He started buying land for me. I opened an account and started transferring money. Was it, where was it? It was next to Gloria. Oh. So that what I thought is that yeah. it can be just yes, extended. Yes, yes. I purchased almost like about seven and a half acres of land. That was my total saving, which I kept it in land. Unfortunately, Manindra passed away in accident. And everything was purchased under somebody's name. So, that fellow duped me. Was it somebody in the ashram? No, it was a worker who is working, was working with Manindra. Okay. I lost seven and a half acre land. Somebody <coughs> transferred it by making duplicate documents, duplicate signature, and I lost everything. We are seeing this in Oroville every year. Same thing. So, all other people, they advise me, file a suit, go for it, try, you will get something. And what I thought is that if I do anything like this, ashram devotees will be involved. Their name will come on the surface. That's right. And so, I decided I will not do anything. I tried talking to the person who land was purchased on name was, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he, he had a malafide intention, so he said that, no, I will not give you anything. Fine. At that point of time, I thought that mother doesn't want me to be here. And there is something else which is there in my life for which I should not try. So I stopped thinking about it. I accepted. I, in my mind, I was very, very clear that nothing has happened. Let me live my life oh, very peacefully. Good. Very good. During this process, I also tried to establish here. I, I had no much money. But still, I rented a small place, established my small house, and we group of people, three, four people, started living here. Started? Living here in uh, Pondicherry. Uh, your family, your friends and... My friends. Yes. And mother was angry on me. Mother told me that you still don't understand? And then something happened that my family, my friends, they had to go back. And 
I thought that it is maybe a little difficult for me to stay here all alone with the language problem, with not knowing anybody. So I decided to concentrate on my business in Bombay. I had a green card for USA. In USA, I was there for about seven years. Oh. And I was doing export business of ready-made garments with very good companies of USA and Canada. The business was very good. Somebody duped me here where I was getting all my product manufactured. I lost another 35 lakhs rupees. Oh. Where I was expecting a profit of 25 lakhs rupees, I lost totally 35 lakhs rupees. And mother put me on road. He said that you still don't want to understand? <sighs> and like a child I said, well I still would like to come in to you. I had a bank loan. To make that payment, I sold my house. In Bombay? In Bombay. Mm -hmm. I had no money at all. And no money to buy my milk for tomorrow. And I stayed with one South Indian fellow for about four or five years. He taught me meditation. He taught me painting. Oh. I started my career with textile. We were having our own manufacturing unit in Bombay. That was a family business. Mm -hmm. From there I went to garments business. And Walmart and others were my buyers. We used to have a good business. Mm. So I came on road and I was, I don't know where I, I, I live. I don't know where I'm supposed to live. All my brothers <coughs> and sister, my sister did help me, but my brothers say, you are independent, you do what you feel like. They used to watch me, but when the help comes, they were little at a distance. I don't uh -huh. regret. Mm. Then I thought, let me go back to my original <coughs> hobby of farming. Uh. So for three years I took a training with somebody for farming, to tune my body, mind, everything for that life. Very interesting. I lost money there also because I left halfway. And that was mother's decision, mother's direction to me. My own mother, worldly mother, she got brain tumor. And so, I was very much attached with my mother. I said, I will look after you. And all my brothers and sisters said, you are not capable of handling mother because you are alone, because you don't have money, so we will not give you permission. I said, fine. If I have one rupee, I'll share one rupee, I'll feed my mother first, and then I will eat, but allow me to do that. They had no choice. So I closed down my farming work 
which was at the bank of Narmada river near Baruch. I came to Mysore hmm. and I was in charge of one unit who were manufacturing ball bearings. I started learning ball bearings and I started learning the total management again. I worked there for seven years and in seven years I brought that company to 100% export unit. After that I retired from that unit and went for construction. And you? Went for construction. Oh. So my life is always a study. Did you hear mother's voice actually? No. But, but it was an inner guidance. It is inner guidance. Mm -hmm. So for four or five years I went in construction business. I was just working for somebody. But as good as I was looking after everything. And thereafter, he said that I don't have any business now, I cannot afford you. So let us be friends and let's not work together. I said, perfectly fine. Still, just to help him, I worked with him for more than a year and a half at Mysore. During that time, my mother passed away. The blessing of mother on me was that my mother could stay with me for eight and a half years at Mysore. And during that time, I could give respect I could give my love, I could give dignity to her. Was any of your family close to Sri Aurobindo and mother? No. No. What are you doing now? I'm totally retired, mm -hmm. but whatever little investment that I have, I put it in the stock market and the stock market gave me good money. Today I am quite happy financially on a sound ground and I am just looking for how I can use this money mm -hmm. after my departure. Did you meet any other ashramites and become close to them? Danwanti Ben. Danwanti? Yeah. Ah. I was very, very close to her. Yeah, she a, was a good friend yeah. also. Just passed recently. Very recently. I've, I've already heard your interview with her ah, on yes. YouTube. Yes. You didn't know anyone else? I used to come here for always for a short period. And I never tried to be close to somebody. Uh -huh. Because then I was so clear that I'm not going to come and settle here. I come for my work, my <coughs> prayers, come to Samadhi, spend some time and then mm -hmm. leave. Can you tell me a little bit about your relation with Danvanti? Oh! <laughs> More than one can expect. I see, used to consider me as her brother. And she came number of times to my residence in Mysore, in Bombay, oh. at Calcutta also. And I help her a lot in her painting. When she wanted to 
<coughs> print her book. All the painting, I took it to my f artist friend in Mysore. We made the photograph, made lot of changes, oh. color wise, everything. I helped her like that. But right from the beginning, we both were very close. So she used to talk a lot to me about ashram and other things. I just told her, I don't want to know anything more about the ashram. Let me understand more about Mother and Sir Bindu. That's my focus. Since 1973, I tried to understand Sri Aurobindo's yoga. I failed miserably. Not once, not twice, but n number of times. I purchased all the collection, thinking that I will read somewhere, sometime. But I start with few pages, and then it becomes very, very difficult to understand. So again, I thought that it is not there in my destiny. There, you and Mr. Ranga came in picture. Ah, I was going to ask you how you met Ranga. No, I met him for the first time. Just recently. Ah. Three, four days back. Four days. Oh gosh. My cousin sister Gunjan, her father was a doctor, Natubai. So Gunjan, one day she just sent me a message. Your discourse. It's a listen this discourse. It may be of your interest to you. Hmm. And it was so interesting for me. Mother wanted me to learn in the right way. Huh. And you and Ranga sir, both of you have so beautifully explained your discourses of life divine and integral yoga, synthesis of yoga, mm -hmm. which Literally, I listen every discourse. Oh. And every day I used to listen two to three discourses. Start my day, six o'clock, I start with you people. The most interesting part, what happened is that whenever I sit with the medita in meditation, a lot of thoughts comes. And it's very difficult to concentrate. Whenever I've been listening your discourses, thought doesn't come. Hmm. And to be very honest with you, my this trip was definitely to be at Mother's Samadhi, but to meet both of you. But to? Meet both of you. Ah. I come for you people. Where are you living now? Calcutta. Calcutta. Oh, so you've moved around a lot. Yes. Yes. But then I feel that I've reached my destination. My destination is this. That is mother's understanding Sri Aurobindo's yoga. And learn from you people. Now, physically, it is not possible to come and spend time with you people. Hemant, how old are you now? At heart, I'm sweet 16. Hmm? At heart, I'm sweet 16. I'm 77, physically. 77. I've been listening to your discourses. There were many discourses where you have taken interviews of so many Ashramites. I tried to listen to them. 
But your discourses on life divine and synthesis of yoga are the only one which appealed me. Oh. And I thought that I must concentrate on this only. And very beautifully, both of you together have explained or rather tried to make it simplified for the people like us that we can understand. I'm very sure that someday I will now read original. Whatever Sri Aurobindo has written, Life Divine and Synthesis of Yoga. I still find it difficult to <coughs> understand Savitri. I have not tried much. Well, I do have uh, one Zoom course in Savitri. Oh, wonderful. And I, I'll uh, send you that link. Great. It's on Sunday night. Okay. In India, 7.30 Sunday night. Okay. About only half an hour. But uh, I work with a man in U.S., in South Carolina, and he is an expert in Vedas. Oh. That's so together we share savagery. Wonderful. Usually line by line. So oh. we can go slowly and people can understand. And I would be happy to have you join us. Thank you very much. I really obliged to you for that. During these uh, discourses, your questions, you are asking Ranga sir to explain certain points, they were beautiful. I have, I have no words to thank you. What work that you have done for me is great. Thank you, sir. What are you, what do you do daily in Calcutta? I start my day, six o'clock, with your discourse. Hmm. Every day morning, one discourse. Every day evening, one discourse. Evening also? Yes, two discourses. I see. Day. Yeah. I have completed everything. Then I come to my house. I sit in my terrace. I'm alone by myself. So no disturbance mm. from anywhere. I don't entertain any phone call or nothing. My one hour for the discourse is everything to me. I guess Ranga has told you that I had a heart attack. I'm aware about it. And uh, now it's been eight weeks. And on December 25th, 10 days, we will start again all of our series. That's Life Divine, yeah, he's associate. told you, I yes. think. Huh? I would like to ask you a few questions. Certainly. Till this time, till this date, I tried to learn this yoga and understand Sri Aurobindo's philosophy, which is the best way to go about it. I think to quiet your mind is a first step to be absolutely quiet. And then, to, since these two are most important to you, life divine and synthesis, you just read not even one page. And don't try to understand it with your mind. That won't work. Because Sri Aurobindo has written so far above our minds, you have to let it penetrate into your heart. And it will. Don't expect it too soon. But it will come in its own time that you have an understanding, a deeper understanding 
than someone with an intellectual capacity could understand. That's the first thing. Now, the other thing is to begin to love the mother, and I'm sure you already do. See, so that you've got, and that is one of the greatest blessings you could have, is to remember her often, when you're walking, when you're eating, when you're going to sleep, remember the mother. Always remember her. This will take you very far. Your next question. I would like to spend more and more time in understanding this. Uh, I have lost my interest in almost every worldly things. I'm very, very fortunate that I have no diabetes. No liabilities, liabilities. Mm -hmm. Nor anybody is depending on me. Ah. I have more than enough saving or earning that whatever I would like to, I can do it. And I'm very simple man, I don't have any desire. So, I'm doing this investment and looking after it to occupy my mind and it keeps me quite active. But I'm losing my interest there also. I would like to spend more and more time for this study. I have another series and it is um, recorded and I can send you that link too but it's on Savitri no but problem. very simply done huh? um, when I I won't say teach but when I share Savitri I use 95% of the time quotations from Life Divine and synthesis. So you'll see the connection there. Uh, not even 5% of myself. I'm, I'm nothing. I am just the child of the mother. Both of you have simply tried to simplify it so that person like us can understand. Those who have an interest it's easy for them to understand. I don't think that you have added anything there in this discourses. Everything what you have asked is to open up again more. Well, you are correct. I try to ask in the way a person who doesn't have great knowledge of Sri Aurobindo Mother would ask those questions. <laughs> and Ranga is so intelligent he can answer anything. Yes. You have their photos in your room? Yeah. In your bedroom also? We are running a center in Calcutta. Ah. <coughs> which on the theme of Sri Aurobindo only. Every Sunday we read <coughs> Gita, mm -hmm. what Sri Aurobindo has written, and it is very interesting. Mr. Alok Pandey, Dr. Alok Pandey, mm -hmm. he visited our center, gave a lecture there. We are closely connected with Bhavan at Calcutta. She had been no bowen. And myself, my sister, her name is Bhavana. We all, both of them are totally devoted to mother, oh. mother's work. Do they come here in the ashram? Very often. 
And could I interview them? Yes, yeah, sure. That sure. would be wonderful. In each, each interview gives some, something to someone out there in this world, yes. you see. We don't know where they go. We have 10,000 subscribers to our website. Oh. It's amazing how it's happening because the world is searching for something higher that they never had before and they can only find it in Mother and Sri Aurobindo. To be very open to you, sir, once I retired from my last construction business, I said that let me find out which is the good way of going it. So I started learning a little bit of Upanishad, Vedas ah. and Upanishad. So we used to read few slokes every day and understand it. I started attending one few seminars for that. Then I thought that as I have taken birth in Jain religion, let me understand and understand Jain religion. So I did a lot of study about that. Recently, I was at a ashram at near Bhavnagar, and I came from there to Raman Maharshi's ashram. I stayed there for five days, mm. did one Upanishad there, and then I came here. But I have found it that this is the right thing. This gives the total insight about everything. Yeah. This ashram will always be there, Mother said, for those who want to learn the integral yoga of Sri Aurobindo. Well, I had, um, actually I had, uh, five years ago, triple bypass. Oh. And then eight weeks ago, I had stent. You had stent. So I've had two heart attacks. But mother is keeping me here. I have still, she has so much to do on me <laughs> that she's keeping me here. Very nice. We are very fortunate to be here. Ah, there is no place greater than this. Now I am in Oroville also. Yeah. Because mother asked me to go to Oroville. Okay. She said to me, I feel you can do something there. So she asked me to do the gardens of Matrimandia. Oh, great. And so I'm involved in that also. Amazing. Now I'm running 86. Oh. So I can't do so much physical work, but I do what I can. So. Overall, you are keeping good health uh, to do everything what you want to do, what you are doing it, mm. or it makes you very tired because of this heart limitation? Not really. Not really. No, she's giving me the energy also. That's right. And I'm writing many poems. That's what I heard. And, and one of some of the discourses you already mentioned about it. When I had the heart attack October 6th, in one month, I wrote almost 300 poems. Oh! It was amazing. And it all comes from Sri Aurobindo. Yes. I mean, I'm only a scribe, and so all the mistakes I take credit for. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is your interest in, let's say, painting? Because you told me you, stud you studied painting. I Shall we talk about that a few minutes? Sure. Well, I was very much interested in uh, 
oil painting on canvas. On canvas. That's what I learned from one South Indian person. I stayed with him and he taught me. He said, I don't take any disciple. I don't teach anybody, but to you I will teach. Oh. And so, like a gurukul, mm -hmm. I was staying with him. And he said, you don't have to pay anything to me. And whenever we have a time, he will he start teaching me about the painting. Also, every day morning, he said, you sit with me at about 4.30 oh. and we will learn meditation. So he taught me these two things. Oh. And it was very interesting, very interesting. I have my few paintings at Calcutta, but I'm no more interested in painting or anything anymore. I'm now interested in having this knowledge. Having? This knowledge. That's the only way my interest is. My limitation is because of my age now, my memory has gone down. Uh, it happens to all of us. Yeah. No problem. No, I don't regret for it. No. But whatever time I can spend in understanding and learning, I would like to. Thinking that Sri Aurobindo has said that it will be registered in your unconscious mind. Everything what you are doing and will all be there. And so I think that I will carry that with me in my next birth. And that will help me there. With Ranga, I will do. Thank you so much for coming. I'm so, so happy to meet you. I have no words to express myself, but you and Mr. Ranga both are so simplified way you explain that it helps to a layman like us. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.